Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first res registration in the world taken by Corinius. <coughs> all went to their towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house of the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you this day is born in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and earth peace among whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. Thank you, Kathy, for sharing your scripture, as well as Allison for sharing the scripture that we use for the lighting of our candles. <coughs> in the Tom Wilson cartoon, Ziggy is standing in front of a large directional sign at a shopping mall. The familiar you are here arrow is pointing to a particular spot. And under the sign, this question had been added. Isn't it time? Isn't it time for you to be headed home? That question is the one that I would like us to ponder this morning. Isn't it time? for you to be headed home. The dictionary defines home as a house we inhabit, often with other people, a pet or two, and enough room to accommodate the in-laws for special occasions. It's that square footage I'd like to discuss with you today. No, home isn't about square footage. Home is about <coughs> the heart, where the heart is. Home is where the soul dwells. So again, is it time for you to be headed home? Come home to a self you can live with. There's an old story about actor Cook, Kirk Douglas picking up a hitchhiker on a California freeway. As the fortunate passenger settled down for a free ride, he suddenly recognized the star with whom he was riding. Excited and frightened to be in the, president, in the presence of such a celebrity, the hitchhiker shouted, Man, do you know who you are? <laughs> That's what I want to ask you as well today. Do you know who you are? Some would have us believe we are where we come from in our scripture today. So Joseph went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, 
because he belonged to the house and lineage of David. Some would have us believe we are what we do. We are teachers, factory workers, nurses, business owners, homemakers, and the list goes on. We do invest, I will agree, a lot of ourselves in our vocations and in our occupations. If we are what we do, then who are we when we return? Some of you are asking that question, I'm sure. sure. Who am I now that I have retired? Some think we are what we have. What if a tornado strikes, however, or the stock market crashes, or thieves break into your house and steal, or enemies invade, God forbid, our country? Does loss of possessions mean we are out of existence? Some people think that is true. I am what I have. If I don't have it, who am I? That's why often suicides tick up when there are diff difficult economic times. We lose who we are. Let me tell you who we are and whose we are. Friends, you are a child of God. I've said that to you many, many times. You are a child of God. And that is something every one of us can claim. That is who I am. I am a child of God. Before you were wounded by family, perhaps, or weary with work, or worried about your possessions, you were created in the image of God. Before we were sinners, or addicts, or perfectionists, or control freaks, we were loved with an everlasting love. Jesus said it well, anyone who loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we shall come to him and make our home in him. That is what coming home is all about. <coughs> Come home to a God you can talk with. In our scripture today, and while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and Mary gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. Some of us have heard that so many times that we are numb to its meaning. Well, in my jam program, the kids, they love to sing, Jesus loves me. They know it well, and they belt it out. Remember when it was that simple? Jesus loves me, this I know. When everything was believable. When you couldn't wait for Christmas. When life was full of mystery. Then we grew up. Parents fell from perfection. Life became difficult. Questions flooded our minds and complicated things. How exactly did the Holy Spirit impregnate Mary? Exactly how many angels were there in the heavenly hosts? How come only the shepherds could hear them? If God came to save the world, how come it isn't saved yet? Why is there illness and poverty and suffering and death? We need to ask these questions to be sure. But we also need to move beyond them, to faith, to faith. We need, friends, to be born again every day, 
not necessarily in some dramatic fashion, but nonetheless renewed in mind and spirit. We need new eyes for seeing, new ears for hearing. We need faith beyond the questions and hope beyond the doubts. O holy child of Bethlehem, be born in us today. For ultimately, faith is not about creeds. It's about relationships, a relationship of a divine kind, in fact, one that we have with God and with our Savior, Jesus Christ. And finally, come home to a church you can connect with. The shepherds said, to one another, let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. I think the hardest thing I've ever had to do right before Christmas was to walk with the family through the death of their three children in a freak car accident. During one visit, I said to that crushed family, not members of my church, yet seeking some guidance. I asked them early on, do you have a pastor or a priest that could call upon you and walk with you? Someone that you know, someone you can connect with. And the mother mumbled, no. We don't go to church. I remember coming home thinking, I don't ever want to face life alone. That was a long time ago when my first pastor. I know it's better now than I knew it then. I don't want to face life alone. I need my friends. I need my church family, to rejoice with me, to weep with me, to help me heal. Oh, I know church people are far from perfect. Sometimes we want other people to do for us what only God can do. That is to love us unconditionally. We want that from someone. Being in a community is not always easy, but community is essential for survival. So we gather at the table for Holy Communion today. We gather not because we are good, but because we are needy. It's a strange meal, to be sure. It's about a broken body, a spilled blood. It gets kind of messy at the table. But life is messy, isn't it? Whosoever will come, the rich, the poor, the young, the old, the glad, the sad, the sinner, the saint, all come home to this table, this banquet table. Theologian Marcus Borg says, to separate from the community is like turning your back on a banquet table right in front of you, filled with food, and deciding instead to go and forage for food yourself. Isn't it time for you to head home?